our Premier League insider, David Ornstein, who's up to date with all of the hottest talking points right now in the game. David, uh, Julian Lopetegui, big storyline yesterday, another big defeat um, against Leicester City. What have you heard uh, about his future at the club? Anna, he's fighting to save his job. He's under huge pressure. The hierarchy at West Ham, led by David Sullivan, the uh, co-owner and chairman, um, are discussing his future as we speak. They're considering all options, which of course includes the possibility that he gets sacked after just seven months in charge. From conversations I've had around the club today, it would appear that they are leaning in that direction, but the decision is not done yet. So we'll have to watch this space on whether they give him more time, whether they let him go on to play Wolves next Monday, of course, his former club. Now, in May, he signed a contract spanning two years with the option of a third. So it wouldn't be the most expensive deal if West Ham were to part company, but certainly it wouldn't be ideal given how much they invested in him, not least on the player side with recruitment. And we must look, of course, the technical director, Tim Stighton, in that as well. But if you go through some of the names, Max Kilman, Crescencio Somerville, Nicholas Fulkrug, Luis Guilherme, uh, Aaron, Aaron Wambasaka, Jean-Claire Tadebo, Carlos Soler, Guido Rodriguez. How many of them really have made an impact? Look at their age profiles as well. Look at Mohamed Kudus missing five matches through suspension and Fulkrug a lot of time through injury. It's not been plain sailing. I think they considered this before the Newcastle match last week, but they went and won. He bought himself some time. I think they thought they had a turning point after they beat Manchester United 27th of October. It led to Eric Ten Hag being sacked. But since then, they've won just one of their five matches. It's simply not going well on or off the pitch. There are reports of um, bust-ups at half-time of the Arsenal game between uh, Lopetegui and Jean-Claire Tadebo. Names are already being linked with this job, such as Graham Potter, such as Edin Terzic, such as um, uh, 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 Sergio Conceição fo following his departure at Porto, such as Roger Smith, who was formerly of Benfica. West Ham tend to give their managers time. David Moyes and Sam Allardyce saw that. But once the fans turn at this club, it's very hard to find a way back. They did last night. Will he survive? We should know soon. It's a pretty dismal situation right now for Lopetegui, David. Um, well, another story that I know you've been covering, that is the contract updates coming out of Liverpool. Uh, what can you tell us? The news I broke today, Anna, was that Virgil van Dijk has been offered a new contract by Liverpool. He has uh, received a proposal. It was some time ago, um, as I understand it. Uh, however, that is quite significant news for Liverpool and their supporters. It's believed to have fallen below his expectations, so there's no agreement at this point. Uh, there's yet to be a breakthrough in terms of the value of the contract and also the length, the duration of it. But those conversations are ongoing and they will hope to retain such an important player. Mo Salah has spoken very publicly about not receiving an offer so far. I understand that that remained the case as recently as the Manchester City defeat on Sunday. But interestingly, I do understand that that will be changing very likely very soon. So again, we'll have to watch this space on that one. Why has he not been offered one and Virgil van Dijk has? That's a question Liverpool will have to answer. Maybe they're prioritising their captain. Maybe if they know they're too far off on Salah that they didn't want to make a, a formal offer just yet to risk antagonising his camp. Let's see. Both of them are very high earners already. They're already into their 30s. That would sort of go against Fenway Sports Group, FSG's policy, uh, their Moneyball model. And so it's a huge decision for them as well. They're in peak form, but not in peak uh, age bracket. Is this the Mookie Betts moment US sports fans may relate it to? Trent Alexander-Arnold, talks on going with him as well. No agreement so far either with him. Real Madrid's interested, is well documented. It's decision time. The clock is ticking. 2025 or sooner. They'll have to sort this out. All three players can sign pre-contract agreements with overseas clubs from the first of January. Why has it been left this late? Well, that's 
question really for the previous regime because Michael Edwards, CEO of Fenway Sports Group, Richard Hughes, sporting director, they came on board this year. They've inherited this problem. They are trying to deal with it and they'll be judged, you could say. But in the meantime, the players are behaving impeccably. The team are winning matches. Arne Slot deserves huge credit for that. This is a massive situation for Liverpool and they will hope to deal with it satisfactorily and uh, succeed off the pitch like they are at the moment on it. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host of NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And if you want even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock.